Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about the saponification reaction, which essentially is a type of the acyl substitution reaction. So, in the saponification reaction, we are going to take an ester, which is a derivative of a carboxylic acid, and we are going to react it with a base, typically sodium or potassium hydroxide. And as a result, we are going to get a corresponding carboxylate, which is a salt of the carboxylic acid, and the alcohol leftover. And by the way, the reaction is called saponification because this is the chemical process by which we are making soap. But I digress. Let's start by looking at the mechanism of this reaction where I'm starting with the butyl acetate, my ester, and I'm going to be reacting it with sodium hydroxide. As hydroxide is a decent nucleophile, the very first step in this reaction is going to be the nucleophilic attack on our carbon of the carbonyl, giving us the following negatively charged intermediate. And as with many reactions involving carboxylic acids and their derivatives, we often refer to this type of intermediate as tetrahedral intermediate because the carbon atom that we have in the middle over here went from the trigonal planar to a tetrahedral state. Now, the next step here is going to be the leaving group dissociation, which is going to be an assisted ionization where essentially our negatively charged oxygen going to kick our butoxide out of the molecule, giving us the carboxylic acid, the molecule on the left, and the alkoxide anion, the molecule on the right. But here is something extremely important to keep in mind. We have just produced two species, one of which is an acid and another one is a base. Those two species are incompatible with each other, they cannot coexist in the same solution, and they will immediately participate in acid-base chemistry and proton transfer. So we immediately going to see that butoxide going to come in and pull off the proton from our carboxylic acid that we have just made. And this proton transfer is going to give us our carboxylate ion and our alcohol. Another important thing to keep in mind is that this last step is the driving force behind our reaction. If we think about that from the perspective of the acid-base equilibrium, then the pKa value of the carboxylic acid is typically somewhere around 5. For the acetic acid that I have over here as my example is uh, 4.75, something around there, but we'll just round it to 5. When it comes to the alcohol, which is the conjugate acid on the product side, the pKa of primary alcohols such as butanol is roughly around 16, which means that in this case our equilibrium constant can be estimated as 10 to the power 16 minus 5, giving us roughly 10 to the 11th power. This is an enormous number, this is 10 with 11 zeros, which means that this reaction is extremely favorable. So it's kind of silly to even talk about that particular proton transfer as an equilibrium. And because of that, as I've mentioned, this last step is our driving force for the entire reaction. Now, as I've mentioned here, we have the carboxylate ion over here as our product, but often we prefer to have neutral products. So in this case, if we want to have a neutral product, we are going to perform the neutralization or acidic workup. So I'm going to show it in a different color to emphasize that that step may or may not be necessary depending on what exactly you're trying to do in your reaction. And for that step, of course, we're just going to bring our acid, whatever acid we're using here, the oxygen is going to grab the proton from our oxonium ion, and we're going to end up with our final neutral product, which is just the carboxylic acid by itself. So if you need to make a carboxylic acid at the end of the saponification, make sure that you perform your acidic workup, otherwise the correct product would be the carboxylate ion with whatever counter ion you have based on the, well, base that you're using. Since here I am using sodium hydroxide, my counter ion to my carboxylate ion would have also been sodium if I needed to indicate that for the purpose of, I don't know, a 
fully balanced chemical equation or something like that. And of course, if you don't want to show the entire mechanism for your reaction, or you don't need to show that for the, I don't know, homework or exam or whatever else it might be, we can always use a quick shortcut where we are going to take our starting material, I'm going to redraw it here, this is our butyl acetate, and with our base, we are going to be breaking this bond over here so that the left part of our molecule, the one containing the carbonyl, that part is going to become our carboxylate ion, and the portion of our molecule where the oxygen was, that part is going to be our alcohol. And of course, as I've mentioned a moment ago, if we want a neutral acid, we're just going to perform an acidic workup, and that will give our neutral acid as the final product. Looking at a few examples here, so for instance, if I look at my first reaction, I have an ester on the left, and I'm treating it with potassium hydroxide. As I've mentioned a moment ago, the nature of our base doesn't really matter. It can be lithium, sodium, or potassium hydroxide, whatever works. In this case, like in the previous case, we are going to be breaking this bond over here, so the left part of my molecule becomes the corresponding carboxylate, and the right side becomes my alcohol. And if I wanted to do my acidic workup, then this is how my final carboxylic acid would look like in this particular example. And while I'm just using a quick shortcut here and not showing the entire mechanism for this process, for the sake of practice, I encourage you to actually draw this mechanism several times to make sure that you are very comfortable with that, so if you do have to show it on the exam, you know every step without having to think about it. Now, let's look at this example over here. It looks a little bit more challenging, but in a nutshell, it is exactly the same idea as before. We have our esters, and we are going to break our esters across this oxygen-carbon bond. Notice that we have two esters here, and this reaction is not particularly chemoselective. If we have multiple esters in our molecule, we are going to hydrolyze both of those, and both of them are going to break their oxygen-carbon bonds. So in this case, we are going to end up with three molecules for our product. This pink portion over here is going to be our alcohol, and then my green portions are going to be my carboxylic acids. So that is going to be the structure for my alcohol, and the green beads here are going to be my carboxylates. It is the same species in this particular case, but theoretically they could have been different things. So for the clarity's sake, instead of just saying, you know, this green thing X2, I wrote it twice just to make sure that it is clear that both of those pieces did indeed come from our starting material. And just like in the previous example, we can do the acidic workup, that would end up giving us our final product in the form of the neutral acid, which in this case is going to be pentanoic acid. And since I had two equivalents of the same carboxylate, I can say that I have this X2, to signify that I have two equivalents of that. And since organic chemists like to put a ring on everything, here is an example of the cyclic ester, we also refer to those as lactones. And although this is a cyclic molecule, the idea here is still going to be exactly the same. We identify our ester, and we are going to break this carbon-oxygen bond right here. But because this is a cyclic molecule, we're not actually going to be making multiple different molecules, like two or three, but instead Instead, both our carboxylate and the alcohol are going to end up as a part of the same final product. So I will first draw it out like this, where I have my carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 labeled. And of course, if I don't want to keep my molecule in this curled form, I can easily open it up and draw it in a linear fashion like so. And just like in the previous cases, I can do my acidic workup to make the final product where my carboxylic acid is now protonated, so I have a neutral final product looking like this. So as you can see, saponification might have a very scary name, but in reality, it's a very simple organic reaction that gives you carboxylic acid and an alcohol from an ester. That's it. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, you can always tell me that by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment below. Check out this video, and I will see you next time!